かの約束の地に降臨した堕天使ヨハネの魔眼がその全てを見通すのです全てのリトルデーモンに授ける堕天の力を<笑><笑>ヨハネ Yohane is a first year from Urano Hoshi's Girls Academy in the city of Uchiyora as well as a member of the school idol group Aqua. She, along with Yo, actually lives in Numazu, a city close by to the town of Uchiyora where Urano Hoshi resides. So, compared to the others, she's more accustomed to city life. That is, if you don't take into account the fact that she's a weirdo. To describe her in simple terms, she is a chunibyo, a term derived from chugaku ninen meaning second year middle school, and byo meaning syndrome, coming together to mean middle schooler syndrome. A phase where middle schoolers will act with delusional behavior during an awkward transitional period of their lives, and then just don't stop. They're nerds, they're weebs, they're weirdos. However, for Yohane, this isn't something that originated in middle school, but rather something she'd been doing as long as she could remember. Hanamaru, who knew her from kindergarten, can attest to this. You see, Yohane believes that she is a fallen angel cast out of heaven into a mortal body, cursed with bad luck and forced to recruit what she refers to as little demons, and has done this all the way into high school, something she has currently begun to be ashamed of. This behavior, this fantasy that she keeps clinging onto, is something she knows is embarrassing, yet she can't seem to stop doing it. She loves it, yet is ashamed of herself for being that way all the same. That alone is what I believe makes her a perfect fit for the school idol group Aqua, and why I believe her role in the series is so important. Of the many themes that Sunshine implements into its story, the most prominent tend to be those of regret, self acceptance, and pursuing one's passions wholeheartedly. And as someone who can sympathize with the plight of someone who actively engages in weird behaviors and pastimes yet still loves them all the same, this aspect of her character is what keeps me unable to not love her. Yohane is constantly ashamed of who she is, refusing to even attend school for a long period of time simply because she made a mistake and introduced herself in the only way that seemed natural, something she promised herself that she would not do. Yet despite her shame, Here she is bringing full on costumes, blankets with magic circles, ceremonial candles, tarot cards, and so many other things that would obviously prompt her to engage in it. Despite being ashamed of her behavior, she doesn't like being called by her mortal name and prefers to be called Yohane. She has nightly streams where she dresses up in costume as Yohane to do fortune telling for her little demons as they all shower her in support of her weird hobby. Trust me, that hits a note very close to home. Even though she shows an obvious love and pride for that side of her that she wants so desperately to keep hidden, she crushes it simply because she knows no one will accept her as she is, and she's ashamed of that fact. I mean, who in their right mind would accept some weirdo like her who has these fantasies at such an age? She should learn to act normal. She needs to because otherwise, there's no way anyone will accept her. Until a girl like her reached out her hand. No other group could possibly understand Yohane's plight quite like Aqua. Here they are, this group of girls with a pipe dream of wanting to rise to the top in a town no one knows or cares about, in an old school that has nothing of note about it, where there's nothing notable and nothing special, and here they are trying to shine. These girls themselves are a collection of failures. Riko's a pianist who ran away. Yo is someone who couldn't even stay by her best friend's side. Ruby is so insecure that she screeches and loses it upon any kind of human interaction. Hanamaru is a bookworm who does nothing but hang out by herself in the library. And Chika is nothing but a worthless, plain, and unexceptional girl. Yet here they are, dancing in cute outfits and singing to their own songs with dreams of being like Muse, this legendary group that quite literally changed the world forever, if anything. They're the only ones who could understand someone like Yohane.
もともとは天使みたいにキラキラしてて何かの弾みでこうなっちゃってるんじゃないかって。There are things that all of us fall in love with, be it games, anime, or some other weird hobby. I mean, hell, here I am with a channel dedicated to overanalyzing cartoons, but on some level, we are ashamed of that. It doesn't even have to be a hobby, it could be something about you, your appearance, your demeanor, the way you speak. All of that could become a source of ridicule, of being a social outcast. Yet, on some level, something within us wants to declare that that thing makes us special despite the shame that it brings us. There's a reason that we are the way we are. In Yohane's case, it's made very clearly apparent that she doesn't actually believe she's a fallen angel. She acknowledges it as what it is a fantasy. But there has to be a reason for all of the things that she does, why she is the way she is. She's unlucky, anxious around other people, constantly finds herself in misfortune, and has a wide imagination, so she has to be a fallen angel. How else would she be able to justify all of this happening to her? I mean, without the wings that she claims that were taken from her, all she is is some loser who was dealt a bad hand in life. She's just some weirdo with the hobby that isn't accepted by others. Plain, unexceptional, and worthless. But there's something to be said about the power of having others by your side who understand you. While Ruby and Hanamaru didn't necessarily get anything Yohane was saying when she did her little rituals or called them little demons, what they did understand was that inability to connect with other people. After all, Ruby is cripplingly unable to interact with anyone and uses Hanamaru and Daya as a buffer or a self defense mechanism. She loves school idols but doesn't have the confidence or insanity. To be like Yohane and declare that passion straight out. It took a full group effort just to get Ruby to the point where she could declare to her sister that she did in fact love school idols and that she wanted to become one herself. Hanamaru loved books, but it was also where she was most comfortable because, like Yohane, she too lived in a world of fantasy, but unlike Yohane, hers was private, it could only be experienced by her. In a sense, it's admirable that someone can be so open about what they love and move into it with full force, and a shame that she feels like that's something to be ashamed of. But those two first years understood this about her. That feeling of wanting to run away from yourself out of shame. In that understanding, Hanamaru and Ruby offered to help Yohane from having her outburst, and in return for their support, Yohane gave them hers. When Ruby wanted to proclaim to her sister that she would be fine if she was gone, when she wanted to show to Leia that their sisters gave them power that they never knew they had before, it was no one but Hanamaru and Yohane who stood by their friend's side. In this bond that they shared, grown from understanding, it could not have been gained if Yohane the Fallen Angel didn't become a school idol. In that sense, a certain girl from Otonokizaka felt that all too well. No one could understand the shame of running away from yourself like Riko. No one could understand throwing away her passion out of fear or feelings of inferiority better than Rico. She loved the piano with all of her heart, but that same heart grew distant from music, causing her to lose confidence in her ability to play. She lost what made her fall in love with that music and, as a result, threw away what made her fly. She lost her wings. But in this group named after the water where she saw the light, Rico gained that love back. By trying her hardest, she learned to love it once again. By singing and dancing on stage full of anxiety and joy, she remembered how warm the light could be. All of that was because of Aqua, this group that she came to as if she was drawn to it by destiny. Who could sympathize with that more than Yohane? Yohane was ashamed of herself, of that which she loved, yet over and over again she kept coming back to her fantasies, felt so unsure of throwing it away, yet incredibly embarrassed of it all the same. This back and forth she does internally is something that Rico could understand and saw in Yohane. It's depressing to think that you're nothing. It's sad to believe that you're worthless, that you're nothing but a normal girl, and that's why Yohane chose to believe what she does. She doesn't actually believe she's a fallen angel. She knows these things aren't real. She knows everything from her name to her wings is all just a fantasy. In fact, hilariously, when it comes to the group's fantastical ideas, unless it's something that strokes her ego, Yohane is always first to point out how ridiculous. How juvenile and how silly some things are. She is very much aware of what she's doing but does it anyway. She wants to believe in it. だから見えない力が働いているんだって。それでだ天使。もちろん、だ天使なんているはずないって。それはもうなんとなく感じている。クラスじゃ言わないようにしているし。でもさ、本当にそういうの全くないのかなって。運命とか見えない力とか。
そんな時出会ったの何か見えない力で引き寄せられるようだったこれは絶対偶然じゃなくて何かに導かれてるんだってそう思った不思議な力が働いたんだって To believe there is nothing special about this world, what you love and about you is sad. It's incredibly uninteresting, so why not believe that there is more to you? Why settle for being a regular person when you can be an idol, a star, an angel? There is nothing worse than being ordinary, so Yohane wanted desperately to believe that she wasn't, in something as silly as even a chance meeting with a dog. That affirmed those beliefs that everything in this world was drawn to one another through mysterious power. There was a reason she was the way she was, and she desperately wanted to believe that it was because she was special, and in that ability to take what she wanted, that made her exceptional. And that's what made her so suited to becoming a school idol. A school idol is someone who believes they are normal, performing on stage and shining as if they were as bright as a real idol. It's a chance to believe in a dream, to live out that dream and show the world a side of you that even you didn't know existed. It's a stage where girls who have things that they love trapped within them and release those feelings out in full force as they sing and dance with people who are just like them. And the fallen angel Yohane was someone who needed to hear the words that she is fine the way she is, that she's exceptional and special the way she is. Being a school idol does something magical to the ones who become one. Ruby found that she had a strength and a power within her that she never knew she had, something that Yohane helped her find. Riko found that love for music once again regained her wings that she loved so long ago, something she sympathized with in Yohane. The power known as a school idol connects people in ways that the ones who become one never thought possible, and for those who feel nothing but contempt for the people that they are, like a certain fallen angel, there was someone there who followed the light of school idols. Who knew that feeling all too well? While Yohane saw herself as weird, embarrassing, shameful, and all of that, what Chika saw was someone who was far more exceptional than she could ever hope to be. For Takami Chika, who had nothing that she felt passionate about, or anything about herself that she thought was exceptional, here was this girl who was full force into a hobby that might seem weird to others, yet made her seem so radiant. Chika reached out to Yohane because she saw someone more exceptional than her, yet despised who she was like herself. Who cares if she's weird? Isn't it weird that she's trying to sing on stage and become someone that she's not? Who cares if she dresses up in weird costumes? A school idol makes costumes for the sole purpose of dancing in front of crowds of people. Who cares if people don't understand? That just means you need to show others your love, regardless of shame, regardless of acceptance, and regardless of how different that makes you, because what makes you different is what makes you so bright. <laughs> It's hard to accept yourself for who you are. There's things about you that might make you weird, different, and outcast or even outright cringy, but if anything, it's more depressing to be nothing special. It's painful to accept that there's nothing special about you, so why settle for being part of the crowd? That doesn't mean you have to be obnoxious or go wild to the point where you turn others away. It means that you find others who can accept you for who you are. And for Yohane, who desperately desired to be more than who she was, yet at the same time was ashamed of that, which made her special, it was this group of girls who ran after her as she ran away from herself that she learned to accept herself for who she was. Yes, she is just a regular person with fantasies that might throw people off. But she loves doing it. She loves dressing up, fortune telling, streaming, and having others join her side as her little demons. And in that love, and how full force she is into that passion, she is more than that. It only took five girls to reach out to her and give her back her wings. It was in a group of ten that the fallen angel Yohane found others who accepted her for who she was and gave her something that she would not forget. In this boring world where everything seems mundane, this regular girl learned to accept the side of her that made her exceptional. Both sides. Light and dark. Thank you guys for watching another video by yours truly, What the What. I would also like a very big thank you to that sexy AMV made by Drock34000. He did the uh, current most viewed Love Life video on this channel and he did a very good job. So go ahead and check him out. I would like to now thank my patrons, namely people like Flutterrod Butt, Flarboo, thanks Narcharad, and Rika Fag. If you want more information on videos that are coming out, you can check out my Twitter. And if you don't want to pay me money on Patreon, you can always donate to my coffee. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.